every show starts with a single idea. In this case, from Don Belisario, the series creator and executive producer. From this, Rick Oakey, the episode's writer and producer, went to work. A lot of the publicity that came out on Maryland this year involved the Kennedys. And we had already done the Kennedys. We had done Lee Harvey Oswald. And so Don suggested that we avoid that element of her life and concentrate on other things. And I had already worked out a whole story that d detailed what everything I could learn about that part of her life, so I had to throw that out, start over, and, and make up a new show. I had to re-muster all my enthusiasm because it broke my rhythm as a writer. But it came back, and ultimately I think we made a, we made a really good show. I'm real proud of this episode. They really came to care for her, and I hope it shows in the movie. Although imagination went into the script, the reality is the show must be made within its budget. A difficult task, as very little of anything made for one episode can be reused in another. Charged with this are supervising producer Harker Wade and unit production manager Ron Groh. We're doing our episodes in seven days this year, as opposed to last year, which was eight days. Mm -hmm. um, I think the directors have had to modify their cuts uh, and uh, not, as you suggest, not give us as much coverage. Right, the number of sets are, uh, are key, as you point out there. Uh, mm -hmm. We, uh, maybe in the past, just as a, uh, a broad analogy here, we'd, we'd have 12, 14 sets. And this year, although 12 or 14 may be written originally in the uh, first draft of the script, we've uh, forced the writers to uh, combine more of their sequences into uh, fewer sets so that we're only talking six or seven sets so that makes it an affordable and shootable within the uh, time and money we're given. Simultaneously, them. casting director Ellen Lubin Staninsky and Mona Jacobson have gone to work. We find all of the actors who have speaking parts and some non-speaking parts, like the mirror images sometimes, mm -hmm. most of the time. Well, casting Goodbye Mila Jean was probably one of the most fun episodes we've had Thank to do. You. We got a lot of submissions, a lot of fun submissions. Even one of the agents said, by the way, he's a male, and we said, forget it. When Susan came to pick up the script, dressed in non Marilyn right. garb, dressed as Susan Griffiths, and I turned to Mona and I said, she's going to get the part. Uh -huh. And guess what? She got the part. An important stage is the production meeting. Here the episode's director, Chris Hibbler, the man in the plaid shirt, oversees the script read-through, attended by representatives of all the departments, where logistic problems are identified and solved. Here they go over the sequence when Sam and Al come across Marilyn skinny dipping in her pool. A critical item to remember is the story takes place in April. It is being filmed during a cold December. I guess Marilyn is wearing a body costume, is that correct? Yeah. I'm going to need one. Uh, is, so is Sam playing this scene in the skivvies? Is that the way that works? Uh, yeah, it will be uh, boxer shorts. Yesterday the pool was not heated, today it's already done. Okay, uh, well, we'll check it out today. But it's a big class. The gals can spend a lot of time in the pool, so we've got to make sure that this pool is warm. What are you saying, Chris? Well, I'm just uh, I'm concerned that let's hope that the heater works, so let's make sure that the heater works. If not, we're going to have to do something auxiliary. Later that day, key members of the crew scout the pool location, only to find that the furnace there cannot heat the pool in time, so an extra boiler will have to be brought in. Also on the scout is Ellen D'Ambrose Williams, the art designer. We are involved in the design of the set, basically carry out the episode that is shooting because then the production designer is prepping the next show. Oftentimes when you're on a location you have to match um, paint colors um, of the interiors and exteriors so that you can recreate that same ambiance on the set. Which leads us to Thomas Rita, the set designer. My role primarily is to make sure the architecture, the walls, the moldings, the doors, things like that are what Cameron has in mind and what people have requested of him, whether it be the director or the script, uh, certain things are, are expected, you know, when they show up to shoot that uh, particular set. And you have to draw fast. Building just as fast as Garrett Davies, the construction coordinator. Uh, which means I'm involved in the construction of all the sets, positioning of the uh, scaffolding for all the lighting, uh, everything in preparation for the day of shooting. They're now working on a bedroom set. Previously it was a living room, 
and we're uh, revamping the set, which means taking some of the uh, stock units out, like windows and door units, uh, rebuilding new ones to take their place, and probably a few new walls here and there. Normally, we have maybe about four or five days to get all the sets ready for a particular episode. This particular show, they've, we've had a change of scheduling, which means I have a kitchen set, which has to be ready for the company on Friday, which only gives us today and tomorrow to get ready for the company with a, probably a seven o'clock crew call on Friday. With the kitchen set finished just in time, the production company moves on to the stage. Here, Chris Hibbler, the director, works with the cast and crew to bring back his conception of the scene. The look of the show was established long before I ever got here. However, you still want to bring what you have to bring as a director to the show, which is your own hopefully unique look, while still maintaining the overall look of the show. But we just kind of talk about the way you don't want to stage it. If the actors have some ideas, you try to incorporate that into the plan. Uh, Scott and Dean were so easy to get along with. That's not really the case in most shows. So many TV stars on established shows, for, for whatever reason, uh, go the other way. They exacerbate the problem. These two guys uh, are just tremendous in terms of, of trying to help you trying to help the show. Appointed with keeping the look of the show is director of photography, Robert Primes. Almost the best thing about Quantum Leap is that there's a new look, there's a new time period, there's a new kind of drama and a new director every episode. A seven day shoot, you're always judging between time and quality. You're always juggling. You go back and forth. Someone's got a terrific idea. You jump on it. Boy, that can be a terrific shot. You go for it and you do it right, and then the clock is tipping away, and the assistant director looks at the watch and says, oops, we're two hours behind, then you scramble to catch up. Also helping the show along is first assistant director, Ryan Gordon. Our production team consists of John Slaughter, the other alternating first assistant, and we have a key second assistant named Brian Fall. The first assistant director's ba uh, responsibility is basically to handle, uh, or handle the scheduling and the, and the logistics of a production company, and make sure that the production company is moving uh, swiftly and efficiently. Uh, not only communicating with the director of photography and the director, muscle in constant communication with all the various departments on the set, and hopefully making sure that everything flows in a nice, orderly fashion. I mean, shooting an application like uh, Marilyn's house, the one of the scenes required Marilyn swimming. When we shot it, it was the dead of winter. We had to make sure that the pool was heated to allow her to stay in that pool for up to eight hours. We had to bring in a heating service to heat that pool when we realized that the water was still very, very cold. The scene was shot without a hitch and uh, everything got beautifully. Also filmed that day was the back plate for the effect shot of Al walking above the water to get a better view of Marilyn. Here Chris Hibbler talks with Danny Kelly, half of the optical team, to set up the shot. Dean is going to be walking on the water. He's going to uh, pop in on top of the water? Yeah. I think so. Tricky he, he was, he was, he was talking, talking about, about coming under running in. Or coming under or in or whatever. Hey! Yes! Coming, coming from close, underneath? We're, we're, we're no. creating this, uh, I don't think I'm familiar with What are you doing there? Walk off the edge and walk out. Once the effect established, measurements and notes are taken to be used when the blue screen element is shot. And yes, there is a reason she's on the ladder. Here to explain the method, behind madness is the other half of the effects team, Roger Dorney. We're here on the blue screen stage today to shoot a few shots. The shot that we're going to do has a background of Marilyn Monroe swimming in a swimming pool and Dean Stockwell doing his best uh, lecherous Al. And he'll be, he'll come in, walk along the water as she's doing a lap in the pool. When we're out on location, we shoot references. We had the lady in a wetsuit up on a ladder, which establishes his size. We shoot the plate which is the uh, the final background. We also record that on videotape. This is uh, the video playback, you know, a monitor and a switcher. When we're shooting the blue screen, we'll be also recording Dean Stockwell against the blue screen over the running playback. It's rough because it isn't keyed in. Okay, after we're finished here, it goes to editorial. We'll uh, sync up the blue screen shot over the background shot, and we'll transfer that film to digital tape and go into a digital D1 bay and key or map those two scenes together.
Editing this episode is Randy Wiles. They shoot on 35 millimeter film. They transfer it to videotape. And then from the videotape, they transfer it onto laser discs that are my sources that I use to cut onto three quarter inch tape. Dailies can range from anywhere from 20 minutes to two hours, depending on what kind of scene that they're trying to shoot, um, how much coverage is actually involved. And speaking of coverage, this is my line script. Uh, every editor has one. Um, this is all these lines that you see here are made by the script supervisor. And this is basically an editor's roadmap. Each line represents a different camera angle. You have many choices as to what angle you want to be in. This is how it's cut. Besides, it would give you a chance to concentrate on the things that make you happy. The new script, um, picking that leading man. It would be so much more than just a job to me, Miss Monroe. Or I can try something different, and instead of cutting to Barbara's close-up, cut to the master. Besides, it would give you a chance to concentrate on the things that make you happy. The new script, um, picking that leading man. It would be so much more than a job to me, Miss Monroe. So you see there's many different ways to, to edit a scene. With each pass, the show evolves towards its final form. Here at its music and effects screening, representatives of the post-production department sit in as Don Belisario makes refinements. I don't want the performance right here. Hello. Go to the girl and then have Marilyn say, but have her loop that line. Yeah. Not who are you the way she did it, but you know, who are you? Also changed during the screening was the pool sequence. As Don felt Al's walk on water effect slowed the scene down, it was dropped. Going to the looping stage, we joined Susan Griffiths, the actress who played Marilyn. Come on, Dennis. Take me away from all this. Oh, boy. Now, is that going to be one line? Come on, Dennis, take me away from all this. However you want to do it. I wish every role that I played, I was is in touch with the character. Part of making somebody believable is by making it kind of simple. Taking an essence of somebody, making the look work, but not making it like to do Marilyn. Really, character, you could really get into all this breathy, but that would be so exaggerated and so, I mean, people would be going, please, you know. I relate to how she related to people. I should have felt dealing with Sam, not how I would deal with it. For dealing with music, we turn to the composer. Ray Bunch. Ah, uh, we look at a picture that has absolutely no music, and then we sit there and decide what it needs, and we hopefully come up with something brilliant that works, and uh, we, um, I don't know, come up with, uh, use a little theme from the show, so which we use a lot, or the home theme, which is... we come in the studio and record the musicians and uh, put it up to picture and make sure that it works. Working with them is the music editor, Bruce Frazier. I analyze where um, there is the possibility that music might be played and then I do a detailed breakdown of that which then Ray takes and that's what he uses as his notes in order to um, score the music. I also serve as, uh, as a recording engineer on the show. Then when that's all done, then I take the final take, and I'm the person who puts that music with the picture and prepares it for the dubbing session. So that's the last cue of the show. And we're done. <laughs> Now we can go have dinner, right? Hello, Miss Neal. Who are you? Please get out of my house. We had an appointment for an hour ago. The next day, we find associate producer Julie Belisario supervising the dub stage. There, the final audio mix is being created, making sure ready for delivery. On behalf of Quantum Leap's cast and crew, we hope you enjoy it. Actually, George told me I should hire someone. I'm tired of being late for everything, I guess. Seems like a little too much reverb on that. Uh -huh.